start our kids off early to say like to ask these questions and to know that they have a voice and that their voice matters it's so important to focus on that small moments of innovative thinking and they're just as important are we talking to kids about what's going on without scaring them but giving them you know not feeling like they're going to grow up and be like you never told me that so anything i say to her is like magnified in her mind and then my son who's five gives no shits. <laughs> like he's trying to make sure that when he gets to be forty, like me, um, he's not living through the same things. That um, when he says, or when I tell him that he can do anything he wants to do, that he really believes that, and, and that can truly happen, and it should be able to happen in this country. So pretty much, um, that's the story I, I'm, I'm in this group to tell the story as a black father, not just as a black father, but as a black immigrant father. Um, that came to this country looking for opportunities and uh, seeing everything that's happening today, looking at um, the way the world is looking at Americans, which I, I don't think is fair to Americans because most Americans are really good people. And it leaves very little space for creativity and innovation and thinking about things differently because I'm really just trying to get through the day. And I always say, change is uncomfortable, and then they just stare at me going, we know that. But, but I'm like, yes, so feel it. It's going to not feel good but we hope the hope is that change happens so uh yeah i'm a little sleep deprived i would say um well, good luck telling his generation okay now go get a job that tells you when to be in the office you have to plan ahead if you want to take time off two weeks from now transition from like parent mode to work mode and vice versa like even if it's just going to the bathroom and like splashing water on my face as like a mental and physical. They're awesome. They're e-learning burned out and I'm e-learning taught out. First of all, I mean, teens in general are going through a lot of angst, social angst. Um, and now we have social media angst that they're still learning because I still have that little gremlin in the back of my head that's like, they're not doing stuff. Why aren't they doing anything? And they're not learning if they're not, you know, on task. But then my my seven-year-old will come into me and, and explain something to me that I didn't even know. And I'll say, where'd you learn that from? And he's like, um, I watched it on Storybots, which is a very good show on Netflix. How we as leaders and as parents, how do we balance or best balance um, leading at work and leading at home. I wouldn't, I would never had this time with my senior son because he would have been so busy. Once they start driving, you really don't see them. Oh, with son, uh, board games, um, and even going outside, uh, that kind of things. Today we did meditation. Because um, you are building up leaders at work. But what's the best way to do that at home, especially if there are special circumstances um, in the household, like a child with a disability or or something as well? Um, and I and I do have these conversations with my eight-month-old too. I mean, I, I tell him about the things that matter because he is going to be part of the generation that hopefully makes... Despite wherever you lost it, uh, third, fourth grade, you are still creative. So it's been a beautiful time too, because sitting back and reflecting on this, the, the idea that this is the longest amount of t consecutive time we will ever have with our children, ever. I wish Mr. Rogers was still alive because he could totally help us out right now with <laughs>